All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, for our third segment, we have a special guest for y'all. We have the support player for Cloud9, Curtis Owie 2000 Ling. Owie, how are you doing? Hi, good, thanks. So, um, congratulations on qualifying for WPC Ace. Y'all went into the last day kind of in a bad position. I believe they were, what, one and three? Mm -hmm. One what? draw, yeah. one loss. Right, exactly. So y'all weren't looking like a very good position. You had to basically win out to make it in, and you did. And we're actually the only team that now doesn't have to play through the tiebreakers. Yeah, um, thank God. Because <laughs> we lose every tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Star Ladder tiebreakers didn't really go, go your way. Um, so are you excited about um, WPC Ace in general? Uh, you'll be playing up against a lot of Chinese teams. I know it's something that's talked about a lot whenever Western teams go and play Eastern teams about getting used to their strategies and stuff. But do you think that playing against them really helps you prepare for TI? And if so, why? Um. Something that we talked about in our team after we qualified for WPC Ace, but not for Star Ladder, was that was like which one would we have preferred to go into? And if the Star Ladder finals are going to be like IG versus DK or something, mm -hmm. then WPC Ace would have been the better choice. But like honestly, we haven't watched that much of Chinese Dota because for the past bit they've had like they haven't really had any big tournaments. I think. Yeah, or not like with the huge ones, right? Because like DK just won Ace and stuff. They had yeah. W. They have had WPC Ace, but it's yeah, been a lot of the like lesser matchups. You would say. Yeah. You've and then a... when the big teams came, they had like three standards and stuff. Yeah, yeah they've <laughs> so... a lot of the players are getting visas for Star Ladder. Yeah. Um. So yeah, do you yeah. Think... We, we... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Um. Yeah, we think it'll be really good for, to help prepare and. Uh... Like, we're definitely excited for WCAs, but I must say, like, I didn't enjoy my time in China last time I went. <laughs> Why not? So, um, so, like, I got out of the airport, got in a taxi, got out of my hotel, and I couldn't breathe because the air was so bad. Oof. That's so, easy. Well, just I mean, just you bring a gas like, mask. That's no problem. Yeah, I, I actually am going to buy masks and bring them there this time. Really? Like, there's, there's, like, this giant bridge, like, uh, for cars, right, that was, like, a block from me, and I couldn't see it through the smog. And I was just like, I want to go home. After like wow. twenty minutes in China, so does so. it feel like you're in like a post-apocalyptic world when you're there? <laughs> it's that bad. Um, some days it's pretty bad, and I've heard that since we're going into summer now, it's actually going to be worse. So that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you you sound thrilled. Yeah, I really yeah. I mean, it, it's a, it's a really big tournament, and Ace is like one of the best of the tournaments. So we're excited in that regard, but China like. Not so excited. <laughs> well, it's not really much of a secret that previously your last trip to China was also kind of muddled by the fact that you didn't have the best relationship in China with your organi your organization at the time in speed gaming. So do you think maybe now that you're with an organization with Cloud9, things seem to be going a lot better in that respect? Do you think you'll be able to like appreciate it a little more or, be, I guess, be less stressed out, I guess, and have, be able to focus on just playing and not having to deal with the uh, administrative aspect? Um, talking about, like, our relationship with Speed Gaming, I actually don't think that we had a bad relationship with them post-Marco Fernandez. Okay. Um, <laughs> the post-Marco era. Yeah, it, it's, you know, a set of eras. We have Marco and post-Marco, and then we have the happy time known as Before I Met Marco, <laughs> where life was better, and I had more faith in humanity. But I anyways, warned um, you, you came to me and asked, what do I think of him? And I said, look, the guy's kind of shady. I, I warned you, man. I mean, it, it was our... It, it was still our best option, sort of, yeah. to be honest. No, it was. This was on you, Kurt. Looking... Well, anyways, anyways, sorry, I sort of digress. Um, Speed Gaming, like, Weir and Paul, they, they're actually really good people from when we met them in China. Uh, I, I will say, I think Cloud9 is definitely a better sponsorship than them. They're a lot more organized, I guess, and I think, like, Weir and Paul, they're a bit inexperienced. Like, Speed Gaming was sort of new. But they, I think they tried their best in, in, to help us in China, and a lot of, more of our problems was that like, we had five people who couldn't speak Cantonese in, or Mandarin, whatever they speak in Shanghai. Sorry, I'm Chinese, but I can't speak anything. Are you worried uh, about that this time around? Are you going to have a translator? I think the translator situation will be a lot better this time, because last time we had Helen come over, but she couldn't stay the entire time. Mm. And we didn't have any other people who spoke English. So, like, in the entire city, it felt like it was just us five who spoke English, plus Helen, who wasn't, who had to leave early, which is, like, we actually only saw us five for like a month, which sort of puts a strain on any relationship, I think. And last time you weren't actually there for like one specific tournament, you played like a couple of the online tournaments. Like, what what, what were the actual tournaments you played last time? Um, we played the Fang Yun and G League, I think. Okay. 
Yeah, and so we, it, they weren't particularly like gigantic turrets either. I mean, that, that, that I don't think that affected our motivation very much, no, no. but it, like Ace is definitely huge. That's where I feel going over there for this turn. You'll be Ace is going to do a lot more to look after the teams and players because right. they're like, they're a huge tournament, they're a huge organization, and they take pride in looking after their players. It's kind of like going to TI where Valve, you know, are going to look after you. I feel like. That's what Ace are going to do with WPC. They'll make sure all the players have a translator with them. They, I mean, I don't know for sure how these things, how these things are going to work. You'll probably find out more than we do. But I, I just, I have this feeling that's going to be a lot more comfortable because of you're there for just the one tournament rather than jet there for like a, a boot camp. Yeah, for sure. And um, I know uh, Kelly Mokis from Alliance has done a lot of work in organizing this. And uh, I talked to her about a couple of the concerns when she first um, talked to us to invite us sort of to the qualifier. And uh, she seems to have stuff pretty in order, and it's well-organized. Yeah, she's done a lot, not only just for the teams, but also interfacing between WPC Ace as well as with the casters, scheduling. Basically, Kelly has been the link between WPC Ace and the West, so, uh, at least for the Western qualifiers. So she's really done a fantastic job. Um, Howie, you talked about the change from uh, Speed to Cloud9, even though the working with Speed was a lot more amicable once Marco got out of the way. What's really the biggest difference in your day-to-day, -day, well, I guess not day-to-day, -day, what's just the biggest difference moving from an organizer like Speed Gaming to one like Cloud9? Um, I mean, I haven't really been on that many sponsored teams, mm -hmm. and this isn't to like speak badly of the other teams I've been on, but Speed Gaming, I, sorry, uh, Cloud9 is like the most organized and like most timely and best organization I've ever played for. Like um, Most teams, when you have your sent out, it takes a little bit of time for them to get to you, but Cloud9 was really organized, and like as soon as we joined, they had us like fill a spreadsheet, and I actually got like a shipment in from Logitech in like two days or something. Like it was ridiculous, and like every time we have a problem, we go for them. It's like immediately done, and they at like Jack uh, maybe like a week or two ago, he just asked us like, "Oh, hey, how's the team going? Is there anything you want to talk about? Do you have any concerns? Is there anything we can be doing better?" And it was really nice to just have that. How long until you can get rid of Charlie? Because that guy's useless. <laughs> he really is. Like all he, like every morning, he just comes into our chat. Like I need to poop, guys, and then he tells me I'm fat, and that's all he does. <laughs> he, he randomly texts me penis during our broadcast for attention. Like he probably Jesus, does. Dude. Not he actual got that pictures. From but okay, <laughs> that was what I heard. Like he randomly texts me his penis. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> the word penis? No, not, yeah. what's wrong with that? Go down that that road again. That's what happens when you hang out with uh, Boba a lot, because I know Charlie and Boba are like best friends. I think they still have calls every morning. Does Charlie still do Boba's like homework and stuff? Um, <laughs> if you want to call it homework, they definitely do some stuff together. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, this is getting this is yeah. getting spicy. Let's keep yeah. it PG thirteen. Boba's pretty mad. He probably likes to play Doctor. Oh, speaking of Boba, <laughs> I, I think he's got a bit of an identity problem. By the way. Uh, he has some issues. <laughs> like, he's been going around the lobbies playing as Curtis Ling, and he's been telling me that he wants to, like, grow your haircut. Basically, he wants to be Bollywood AUI 2000. Oh, that's flattering, I guess. <laughs> How creeped out <laughs> are you that, on the scale? Is that the right word? Flattering. It's definitely flattering. <laughs> Not creepy. Well, you, res you responded the other day. You played as uh, Sam Sosali yourself, yeah. right? I was going to change it to Kanishka Sosali, but he begged me not to do it. <laughs> and then he changed it to Wei Sing Yun, and then Sing Sing changed his name to his dad's name. <laughs> and he under that. And apparently, uh, Boba's dad watched the cast or something. He was in our team speak this morning telling us, and he was just like, my dad watched that cast, dude. <laughs> dude. And he was laughing so hard. Why is my name on that guy's? Oh so, my goodness. Uh, speaking of names and identity, identity crises, uh, what's what's with uh, e. e. Sama's inf infatuation with all the waifu names? And the, um, gen the random general of the heavens and all that stuff? Well, they're definitely all from like, anime and manga. That's how, about how much I know. Okay. Um, what, what, how does the team feel about all that stuff? It Like, to us, like, Personally, I I'd prefer everyone just plays under a name because it's easy. We'll never have to deal with any admin stuff. But like, uh, to me, it's like, like to us as a team. Like, I don't think we really care. Yeah. Is anyone else a secret anime lover, or is it just envy? Um, I, I like reading manga. I know Pi likes anime, sing likes anime. Bone, uh, Bone doesn't like anime. <laughs> Poor guy. Is he a, is he an anime hater? Like, does he flame people, or is just um, it's not his thing? I think he may have flamed anime once in the past, but I think Envy got pretty mad. I, I, don't know. I, I actually don't know. I mean, the guy I, like I, I basically... remember having discussions about it because Bone is like a huge movie lover, and then okay, Envy's yeah. a giant anime lover, and then sometimes they talk about like, "Oh, anime's not deep enough for me," and Envy's like, "Whoa, there's no way!" And like, you know. So, uh, 
You guys didn't qualify for Starla. This is a completely different topic. This came to me. But you will be going to Bucharest for DreamHack Bucharest. Mm -hmm. What's what's yeah, the deal with that tournament? That was like randomly came up. No one really knew what was going on. And suddenly, this is like four team only invitational. Mm -hmm. There's no qualifiers. What? How how did this tournament happen? Like, what are your thoughts on this tournament? Um, I mean, thoughts on this organization. I'm, I'm not sure. I guess they they're having DreamHack Bucharest and they just want to do the tournament there. Yeah. Uh, are you excited to it's... go to Romania? Yeah, it's really nice for us because we're going to a place where Bone can actually get a visa because he doesn't like. <laughs> I actually wanted to bring that up. Yeah. So we'll actually get to play as a team that's not in China because, like, in China, our, our conditions, even though, like, I, I want to say no fall speed gaming, but like playing at land cafes in a different environment, a different place where no one can speak English, you can't play as well as you want to, I think. Yeah. Well, WPC, well, you'll be actually at a studio in Boots. Yes. I, be I believe we're actually like in apartments and stuff instead of like just staying at a hotel. Oh, wow. I I'm not too sure how it works fully because okay Char charlie is sort of useful he does that sort of stuff for us yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah um well on the subject of visas what's bone seven visa situation you guys seem like one of the more likely teams to get invited to ti4 i think most people have you on their short list is he going to be able to get a visa if you guys do qualify or are invited um, from everything we've heard he will definitely be able to get a visa uh we're working with like a like we're going full out for it like we'll have a immigration lawyer and everything to oh, make yeah. sure you can. Is that something Cloud9's uh, helping you with? Is Valve taking the lead there? Or? Uh, I think Cloud9's in control of the situation, but they've probably asked Valve for some help on it, maybe. I, I'm not too sure. I, okay. I don't deal with that that much. We've heard a lot about esports uh, athletes being able to get the visa like designation as an actual athlete, and the reason you're coming is to like compete. And for a while, it was impossible for like cyber athletes to get that. But recently, it's become more and more lenient. Is that the route that y'all are going? Um... Trying to get like an athlete status? You'll have to actually ask Charlie about I don't, I don't know any of that <laughs> no, stuff, it's fine. to be honest. Like, Charlie's not going to fucking know. No, he is not really. Oh, yeah, he's sort of useless like that, huh? <laughs> but, um... he's, actually, he's actually, he's a, he's a lawyer, actually, so he really yeah. should know. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, we'll do everything that we can. If they think that's the best path to take, then I, I'm sure they'll explore that path. Okay, but cool. oh, honestly, I, I'm not involved with that at all. Gotcha. Um, well. What else do we got from Brian? Well, um, nowadays, uh, we were talking about a, about uh, it to fear earlier. It seems like the one to five farm priority is kind of a little more fluid than it used to be, right? Because, uh, like we said with fear, Arteezy has the highest GPM of any player, and he's a mid player. Um, when you play support, you enjoy you know mercilessly killing creeps, even though a lot of supports don't usually do that. Um, like when you get Visage and you get on a roll, right? You get a double kill and you move on, and you kind of get a little bit of farm priority yourself. Um, what if, what do you think is really the genesis of that trend happening? Is it just a general style in play, or do you think there were changes in the last patch that's really allowed the farm priority to be a bit more fluid than it has been in the past? Um, I think it's, a, like, first, I think it's a bit to do with a couple changes to the support heroes that are sort of played. Some of them have a bit more impact than before, where you see, like, Crystal Maiden Veno support combos being run. Mm -hmm. And second, I think it's also because the level of play in Dota in general has risen a lot. Like, because if you go back to TI too, like the play is pretty awful, honestly. Like, if you watch it com and compare it to now, mm -hmm. and when the level of play increases, like you can't have someone who just buys boards and has brown boots at forty minutes. Like, it, it your game just doesn't work. I mean, there are some rare circumstances where you're forced into that, but it's not something that you should aim for anymore. I know, like in Dota one, the Definition of, of a support back then to me when I played Dota 1 was they buy wards the entire game and are expected to try to get three bracers and like strength shreds or something. <laughs> yeah. And that was their ideal. Yeah. So how does that work? Like if if you're in a match, right? And let's say you're you're in lane, you you're having a good time, you get like two double kills, you're four 0 with vigils like eight minutes into the game. Is it a conversation that goes on like between the team of Hey, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna farm a little harder now that I've gotten a good start. Allocate a bit more to me, or is it just something that kind of happens because Visage is the kind of hero he is. He's able to get a lot of kills in team fights, or does it also kind of happen because you tend to split push more than a lot of supports do? Um, for our teams, we talk about it a bit, but mostly by now it's just like we just do it automatically. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go to the jungle so AUI can take the lane or something. Okay. But for as for Visage, like if you're snowballing, like you you. That, that hero, if you're ahead, you can basically just run to any lane and you'll make something happen. Okay. 
So, like, it's not something I, I think about that much. I just, oh, look, I have birds. I'm going to go to a safe lane and screw up their carries farm. And then somehow, like, their support comes in. You just kill them because you're Visage. So. Do you think that's something that you do more than other teams in terms of just, like, letting the support take the lane? Or um, is it something that maybe everyone does and we just don't see as much? Because we usually don't see a four do it. Maybe you might see an off laner take it more or a mid player take it more. Um, I, I think it's getting pretty standard. I, I don't think it's a new thing. I know around TI3, like, Poppy would kick Dendi out of mid every <laughs> night time. Like, the six minute mark came, it was night time. He's like, Dendi, get out of mid, go gank somewhere. And what that did was it forced movement. One, your solo mid would go to an R lane to gank. And two, your support could catch up in mid, which was really good. It was one of the things that we looked at at Navi before TI3 and we're like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. And now everyone and, pretty much does it. Yeah, everyone, like, Empire in particular, I really like what they do. They're like, they have the mid and the secondary support solo smoke uh, smoke into the enemy jungle, while another support takes mid. And, like, it just forces movement on the map. It creates a lot of space. You get early words in the jungle. Like, it, I think it's just something that's going to become pretty standard. I don't think you can leave someone to get sort of sacked in a game anymore. I know, um, I was actually talking to Purge yesterday about, like, I, I, look, I was looking at a replay from the Korean Dota League, and one of the problems I thought was that they sack their supports a lot. I mean, the Korean Dota League, like, the level's definitely lower, but they're still they're still getting there, but, like, one of the problems they're facing is, like, they actually had nothing, yeah. even though they're ahead, mm -hmm. the supports. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you guys have really looked at any oh, of the yeah. games. The, but... the first game, MVP versus Zephyr, MVP supports at eight minutes in were both level two. <laughs> yeah. I was like... watching this, like, this is this is not yeah. good. They, that's, like, in, you've instantly lost at that point, practically. Like, sure, maybe your carry's farming and your solo mid's doing okay, but level two supports is just... I mean, even Zephyr, I think, had suffered from the same problems where they also stack, sacked their supports, but not to the same extent as MVP Phoenix were doing it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's how you can play Dota anymore. Like, supports have a big impact in games now. And with a lit, like... I even think, like, if you're going to play, like, someone like Chen or Vincent, you should be chaosing the carry. Like, it, you do more with that early 250, 300 gold than your carry will. Because if you look at it in a, like, grand scheme thing, like, that 300 gold is basically, like, one-tenth of the gold you're going to get for the entire first 30 minutes, whereas for your carry, it's like, wow, six creeps, wow. <laughs> That's a good speaking, point. Um, speaking of carrying, are we ever going to see a return to the one position for you? Um, Some people call you secretly the carry of <laughs> Cloud9, but will we see you actually in the carry role ever again? Not for the foreseeable future. Do you miss I, it? Do you like playing support better? I like playing support. I mean, I like playing Dota, so I'll pretty much play anything. That's a good answer. <laughs> Good. That's a uh, good attitude. Uh, like, just to tell a story about when I joined Kaipi, like, after TI3, we all, like, on Dignitas House, we knew that we didn't really want to stick together. We we're forming different teams, but, like, I wanted to play a core role, and, but when Kaipi gave me sort of, like, an invite to try out, like, they were one of the only teams I was comfortable with all their core players. I'm like, oh, I, it's okay, I don't need to play a core role. I'm comfortable supporting you guys. So, like, I'm fine with not playing carry as long as my cores are these players. But if they, if they suck ass, then you'll take over. <laughs> no, I, like, the thing about my team is, like, right now, is, like, they're all very tryhard. We're all very tryhard players. I, I have full confidence that, like, even if they mess up one game, like, they'll be able to improve from it. I, I think my team learns very fast, and they improve very fast. Uh, I mean, myself included, because, like, when I switched to support, I was so bad. Like, a lot of things in support, I'm so bad still at. Like, it's actually embarrassing if you watch the games. I don't know yeah, how many people pick up on it, but like, <laughs> you're, you're, oh you're pretty god, like, here. <laughs> some stuff I can't do a support, but that's, yeah. That's why Ben here isn't talking, because he secretly hates you. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's how it is. That was awesome. We that's... used to play a lot of pubs together. And now you don't play pubs anymore. Yeah. Who ditched who? Like he ditched because he's playing competitive. Me? Yeah. Is it my fault? I'm what? sorry, dude. No, it's not your fault. It's okay. You have better things to do. When, when are you going like, to come back games? to LA and... Money? When are you going to come back to LA and visit and cook salmon with Ben again for us? Oh, I mean, hopefully as soon as I can. Ho hopefully we qualify for like everything that's in the area and we can go there. Because that, that was pretty fun. We really to make some nice salmon. Yeah, you, you made some good fried rice yourself, I believe, as well. And in and out Don't forget about that, man. Oh, okay. oh yeah, and just in and out And... Dude, Kerr was like going nuts. Tofu when he, when he... place that I thought was so good. But I can't get over that place. Which place? I, I don't know. We went to some Korean place and it was really good. Oh, the Korean barbecue that's open to like. No, 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 no. we didn't go to that. Okay. Uh, it, it was it's like tofu hot pot. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember that one. Place, yeah. yeah. It was it's really good. good. When, when you came here, you were just going like crazy the whole time about how cheap food was, how good it was it's here. It's really cheap. Like Vancouver's expensive for food, so. You're like, I'm gonna eat in and out every meal 
every day for <laughs> the 10 days I'm here. I would have been pretty happy. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. In and out is pretty good. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you'll make Charlie happy with that one. Kurt, I want to ask you I more... like Subway, too. Sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, but so, I want to ask you about your team. If you had to take an honest look in the mirror and evaluate the team just as objectively as possible, what are your biggest weaknesses of the team, and how can you improve heading towards TI? Um, biggest weaknesses, huh? <laughs> you can say strengths next, but I want to start with the tough stuff. Yeah, I, I need to think, because we're so good, I can't think of... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, there's, we have a lot of... We have some communication issues, I think. I, I think so. a lot of this is my fault, but like I, I sometimes talk about worthless stuff in TeamSpeak, which makes communications a bit like haggard down. Hmm. That's one of our weaknesses. And like uh, sometimes we don't push advantages, I think, well enough. Like we'll... Or we get stuck in one style of play, like, for example, I I don't want to harp on Sixteen at all here, but like, for example, he might go Necro Book on Invoker when it should have been a different build that game, because we're so used to playing a style where you would go Necro Book on Invoker. So sometimes we, maybe, maybe we like theorycraft something out and we don't change it properly in game, we don't react to a situation well enough, and we just go a build that we know is good, but even though there's a better one in the game. Mm -hmm. And like, also like maybe purchasing VKV, I see that a lot. A lot of times I, I agree with not getting a BKB actually, but there are definitely are some games where you need to just have three BKBs on your core and just go for their throat and kill them. Let, yeah, let me ask you, have you guys had team discussions about the BKB? Because it's always a hot topic in the community. Envy is kind of a love him or hate him guy for most Dota fans. Does Envy make those calls on his own? Have you like sat down and say, hey, listen, man, you need to start buying BKB? Because <laughs> it seems like he's buying it um, more lately. We've definitely talked about it. I think that... A lot of the times that people say he should have bought a BKB, people don't know what they're talking about, though, actually. Like, there are some games where, like, BKB is actually not good. You go BKB, you actually just lose the game 10 minutes later because your farm farm is, your farm speed is too low with a BKB or something. Yeah. It's Reddit actually, that's why I, th about. I thought it was... <laughs> Sorry, what? I was saying, Reddit doesn't know what they're talking about. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, it really is a surprise, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I mean, everyone can post their 5k posting. MMRs now, so... Yeah. It's good. good. Um... Yeah, anything else you would say is like a weakness of the team or something you're working on? And aside from that, like, what do you think are your greatest strengths walking towards TI? Um, for more weakness, I, I think like some of our, like, I think we're, something Bone said that sort of resonated with me a bit is like, we're five very good individual players, which I think is true, but like, we lack a lot of teamwork in some stuff. Um, and he, I think he feels that we need to over communicate to compensate for that, which mm -hmm. is sort of true too. Like, we're, in terms of competitive experience, like we're not that high up there compared to other teams when you have like Navi with like Poppy who's been playing since I was born or something. <laughs> Do you guys have an emotional leader at Lands, would you say? Like if you look at Vichy Gaming, it's clear ROTK who's oh, like the that, engine of the team, he's screaming his head off, Fnatic has no tail. Do you guys have someone who's like hyping everyone up or kind of pushing you to do better at Lands? I think like our motivational person is definitely Envy. Like Highlight I said something before, I was like, let's be honest, this team wouldn't be shit without Envy. Because, like, he really is motivating to be in a team with. But, like, that's something we also know, like, especially after playing at D2O with Fnatic, um, it's really nice to have someone who yells in a LAN. Like, it's actually very big. And when we were in China and Korea playing as five, those were the only two LANs we really played as five. We didn't have anyone who really yelled. And it just helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, Luminous, actually, when we were interviewing him last week, talked about how he thinks that Cloud. He actually thought that y'all were going to win TI, and whether or not that was his own biases at work or not, he the reason he gave was that when it comes to a land environment, you guys kick it up a notch. Uh, and is that something that you really think? Do you really think that your communication, the way you play together, whether that emotional element plays a fact um, when y'all get together in a land environment? Do you really, you know, kick it up a notch and play better? Um, I think that like at land we're. We're definitely even more tryhard, even though we try to give our best like every day in and out online tournaments. Sometimes it's sort of hard, but um, and our reason is like, like people blame us of manipulating ping to our advantage, but like every single match we play, we're at a ping disadvantage almost. Like we have when we are international with three Europeans and two Canadians, like it's very hard to get good ping for us, and like. I don't, is, I don't know. Isn't like, that kind of your is... problem, though? Should I mean, should, yeah, event, should it, it other is, teams have to that, suffer because of that? That's our advantage on land, right? Oh, on land, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and as far as other teams suffering for it, like, I, I like, 
Oh my god, the people who say we manipulate ping when we're playing, we play D2 all, we play two games on, we play every game on USC versus like, every American team, we play every game on Lux versus every, like, every other team that's not American, is, it's sort of ridiculous, because the most fair is clearly like, two Luxembourg games, one US East versus a European team, because if you compare the pings on, like, aggregate pings for those three games, like, they'll still have a clear advantage, I, I don't know. Well, and you're it's... actually one of the players who has to... Does that... Let me ask you, how much does that hurt you? Because you are you play a lot of micro-intensive heroes. You're one of the US West players, so oftentimes you're in primarily European events. Mm -hmm. You have to play on Europe. Does that really hurt you a lot? Do you think there's a huge drop-off? Is it something you've mostly learned to deal with? Uh, I mean, for me, I know it affects me a lot. Like, you sort of learn to deal with it, but... God, if you watch my Rubik on Luxembourg, like, you will shed <laughs> tears from my play. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so... I mean, like, you, you learn to deal with it, but, like, when I play on that, I definitely think I play a lot better. Okay. Ben, I think this is where you call that loser talk. No. Ping's, no. Ping, ping's fair. Ping's, ping's fair, fair thing to be. What, west Deluxe is tough. East Deluxe is definitely yeah. playable. I mean, like, I, I think Western Europe to East is perfectly playable, and, I think Lux, yeah. and US East to Lux is fine, too. Like, yeah. I don't see why you had a problem, because Lux to East is the same as US West to East. It makes you, no sense to you me. You know, honestly, the one thing... Well, you guys don't really want to live in a team house for a long time, which is something you've come out and s multiple people on your team have said publicly, but I'm surprised there's not even a single U.S. team that has a team house on the East Coast. There's EHUG, I guess, but as far as, yeah. like, you've got EG who do have a team house, not everyone's living there, but that's in San Francisco. It just seems yeah. kind of odd. Uh, the EG team house doesn't really make sense to me for Dota, but I don't think it was formed there for Dota, so... Yeah, it was there for StarCraft originally. I which made sense, because it's closer to Korea. Um, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I'm not a big believer in the team house thing right now. I, I think that you can do fine without it, and I think bootcamp is very good. We've seen that sort of from Navi. They don't team house, but they bootcamp before bigger lands, and they are really good, so. <laughs> are you guys going to bootcamp before you go to WPC? Do you even have time for that? Um, I'm not completely sure what our plans are. I think we would like to get one small bootcamp in before... A big tournament this summer because there's a lot on coming in and possibly one before ti like that would be the ideal for me maybe but definitely not like a full team hustling where we're living there for a year is that something you could see yourself like changing position on in the future like maybe once you're done college and you have less responsibilities at home or you just in general don't like the idea um i mean i i could see it i, I know for the league of legends scene it's it's really good for them but as the dota scene is i i, I don't really think it's necessary and like it, since we're such an international team, it's sort of hard to get us all into a team house because, like, one of the problems we had in China was like it's so hard to communicate with people back at home. I thought it'd be really easy to keep in contact with my family and my friends at home, but like it was actually impossible. Yeah, you saw like a lot of players. I didn't even think uh, the reason Ria Bora is used for leaving Ehug is he just missed his family. He wasn't able to communicate him the way he wanted to, and he didn't like not being away from home. So that's. Yeah. Definitely understandable. I think it's different for every person. Like, some people are fine with it. Like, yeah. I mean, speaking from personal experience, I grew up all over the world and lived away from my parents for a my, lot of my life. So, I, right. I mean, I put a lot of effort into keeping in touch with them, but I could easily, like, I mean, I live out here. My parents yeah. live off in Canada at the moment, so. And you've got other family in Australia yeah. as well. So, I think for some people it's fine, but for a lot of people, especially, like, people who just grew up in the same place, the same country their whole life, it's tricky. Kurt, uh, I think we're wrapping up on the interview here. Anything else that you want to talk about? Is there anything that you think is interesting going on that we haven't brought up yet? Um, not particularly. Just do our do our job for us. We've run out of notes. <laughs> just support us in tournaments, stuff like that. Uh, Charlie's actually useful. Yeah. I guess I'll say that. Wow. We've really run out of things to talk about. <laughs> oh, I have, yeah, uh, you're... I have a plushie. Yeah, there's you a Garfield one oh, in the background as well. There's a Captain Bevel my girlfriend made me a while ago. It's wow. pretty cute. Oh, That's she made really that? That's awesome. Yeah, my girlfriend actually made this. Dang. Uh, she must be have nothing then. else to talk about. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for coming on. Uh, before we let you go, where can people follow you? You want to plug your sponsors? Can you do a better job than Envy? Yeah, I have them written down. I mean, I memorized them. So... So uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at AOI 2000. I also have a Facebook page I sort of recently made, AOI 2000 Dota, I think. And I'll be streaming hopefully more, even though I'm really lazy. <sighs> we'll we'll believe it when we see it. AOI underscore 2000, sorry? We'll believe it when we see it. Fog has been yeah. saying he's going to start streaming for like a year and a half. Yeah. 
Oh, it's been more than that. <laughs> it's yeah, even longer. Like, you when we started a part about it, hey, why don't you stream, man? I used to stream so much. I'll start streaming soon, but he just never did it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, shout out to my team, Team Cloud9, and our sponsors, Alienware, Crunchyroll, Logitech, Need for Seat, Home Drawer, Sidekick, and HyperX. Thanks for coming on, Kurt. Yeah, thanks for having me. See, Envy, that wasn't so hard. No, it wasn't. All right, guys. Well, that wraps us up for uh, today. Uh, I don't think we have any unfinished business, I believe. Is there going to be a song? Mm, not this week. Next week. <sighs> next week, we're right. in Kiev. Okay. Next show when I'm back. <laughs> next these, show. These, these we don't actually have... I don't know if we have, like, actual songs ready. Express your dis displeasure. There's one or two songs left to do. What about the cosplay? It's coming soon. TM. TM. Mm. All right, guys. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks for tuning <laughs> in again. Note to end on. We will not be here next week. Uh, we will be taking our first week off from having a show, as three of us will actually be in Kiev. But we'll be up going the next week again. So make sure to catch us then. And thanks for tuning in, guys, and have a wonderful evening.